never heard a show like this. Welcome back once again to Joe the Shirts Off the Cuff. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry for the long break, but uh, as usual, you know, those holiday weekends take a lot out of me. And I've been busy doing other things. Uh, I had to go to my... Uh, oh, hold on, let me fix something here. I'm going to be a little noisy for about a second. Er, oh, no. Okay, move that back. As you know, I started my... Uh, my internship over at the at a veterinary clinic recently, and it uh, has been really a lot to take in, a lot to handle, and, and it, it's ten hours a day. All right, so that's ten hours a day that I'm working for free. Okay, so it takes a lot out of me. And uh, when I get home and I'm you know after working ten hours and being out of the house for about twelve, I'm exhausted. So I wasn't you know in any place to do it. But today I'm not doing that today. And today I'm doing. The show, and welcome back, everybody. Joe, the shirt's off the cuff. Um, before I get into the show, today's topic, when in doubt, blame a woman. Uh, I, I want to talk about just a little bit about one of the last shows I did, if not the last show I did, which was uh, all about canned corn, the history of corn, maize, uh, creamed corn, types of corn, how many, uh, the canning process where it originated, how, uh, the fact that it was, you know, actually a military use. I mean, I cannot believe you guys actually listen to it. <laughs> and when I say you guys actually listen to it, I mean, you really did. Let me put, put it this way. It is currently rated in, in amongst all my shows as the seventh most popular show ever. But it's actually more popular than that because it actually ranks uh, overall third most popular for not just overall plays, but individual listeners. Because a lot of times what will happen is like I'll get a show like, uh, let's say, Tentacle Dick Monsters. And uh, and it's I think that's currently ranked like I think three or four in my uh, in my stuff. And uh, yeah, it got a lot of plays, but it got a lot of repeat plays by the same people you know, because, you know, uh, they were they, they had friends and they wanted to listen in on it, you know, that kind of thing. But the show about corn <laughs> has almost as many individual plays as Total Plays itself, which is ranks at number three as the the most popular show I've ever done. So <laughs> I had no idea you guys cared about corn that much. I, I really I, I really did not. I don't know if I want to do a, like a follow up to that, maybe on, I don't know, canned peas or beets or Maybe a completely different wild subject like, you know, sandals or uh, shoelaces, you know. <laughs> Any case, thanks for listening in. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Uh, before, also, before I get on, let's uh, do some celebrity birthdays. I got some celebrity birthdays for us to do uh, because I've been gone for a few days. So let's start out with Monday, July 8th. If your birthday was July 8th, that means you shared birthdays with... Jaden Smith is 15 years old, son of Will Smith. Kevin Bacon is 55. Singer Beck is 43. Angelica Houston is 62. Let me see if I can get this right. Vito, no, Milo Ventimiglia is 36. And, as is, and Robert Naper is 54. They were both on the TV show Heroes. Wolfgang Puck is 64. Uh, Jeffrey Tambor is 69. Uh, self-help guru Marianne Williamson is 61 and both get this john d rockefeller and nelson rockefeller's birthday so go fig right actually it's been a apparently a bad time to be a celebrity uh quite recently uh let's see uh let's see elton john has been uh suffering from appendicitis uh travis travis uh randy travis uh was uh, hospitalized for a heart problem and now a possible stroke and Placido Domingo, uh, also in the hospital, suffering from pulmonary embolism. He is 72 years old. So if you're, not a good time to be a celebrity unless you happen to enjoy hospital stays. Okay, now, let's see. Joe shoots off the cup today. And today's show topic is when in doubt, blame a woman. Now, when I say this, uh, please understand, you all know I'm really quite the feminist. You know, I love all those chicks and babes out there. Nothing like, nothing like some nice slit make my day go. But... Uh, I'm kidding. I'm not talking about stuff like, you know, blame a woman for like, you know, you got lost because she gave me bad directions or uh, I can't make it because my wife's get, being a pain in the ass. No, nothing like that. No, we're talking about historically, uh, mythologically. And uh, by the way, when I say mythologically, I do include religion in that. Uh, I was inspired by this recently 
I've been reading comic books again uh, by a, by a storyline of uh, Pandora. And uh, Pandora, as you know, is a very famous uh, Greek story wherein allegedly she opened up the box that let out all evil into the world. You know, it's her fault that all there are so many evils in the world. You know, it's, you know she, she could not resist opening the box. Now, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very interesting story to me because it is a woman that does this, you know, in Greek mythology. And let's not kid ourselves. You, you got to know that story was written by a man, right? So basically, the, the basic story of Pandora is that she uh, is either given a box or, or a box is put it in her care or a box is left near her where she is told specifically, do not open the box. If you open the box, very bad things will happen, okay? And of course, uh, Pandora, being the curious person that she is, uh, d- goes against these wishes and uh, decides she wants to take just a quick peek. Just a peek, just a hint, hint. You know, no, no big deal. Just wants to take a quick little peek and see what's in there. And she begins to lift the lid of the box and boom, all the evils of, the, of on earth come out. You know, hell just breaks out. You know, and uh, that's why we have so much pain and suffering uh, to this day because Pandora fucked up. Now, this runs very, uh, this, is very this story runs very, very parallel to uh, Judeo-Christian mythology, or religion, if you want to call it that, in uh, the story of Adam and Eve, where uh, you know, God creates paradise, and he creates Adam, and Adam's got nobody to get his rocks off with, so he creates Eve, you know, out of a rib bone for him, you know, and uh, shapes Eve into a woman and says, here you go, uh, you know, welcome to paradise. This is absolute paradise, God tells him. This is all for you. The earth, the, the plant, everything, it's all for you. I will give you food from the trees. I will give you dominion over, the, or, over all creatures of the earth. You can pretty much do whatever you want in absolute paradise. Just don't eat from that tree right over there. Hmm, what's that? Why? Oh, uh, don't eat from that tree because then you will know that you will have the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, just that's all I'm saying, you know, have you can have all the fruit you want, you can go swimming, you can go play with the lions and ride a giraffe if you want, you know, you can fuck in public, it's great, no problem, there's no one else here anyway, but whatever you do, don't go to that one tree right over there, okay, just just don't do it, all right, and so then what happens, of course, you all know the rest of the story, is uh, Eve is seduced, Very uh, interesting there that it was Eve that was seduced by the devil in the form of a serpent. And, of course, the serpent looks a lot like a dick. Uh, So, you know, the the serpent convinces Eve that, you know, if you eat from the tree of uh, knowledge, that you will become like God. And, of course, uh, she does and then convinces Adam to also do the same. And, uh, well, that just fucks up everything for everybody, right? And so Adam and Eve... Uh, are kicked out of paradise, and uh, we have to suffer the consequences since that. Uh, it's a very interesting story of bullshit. I mean, because in both cases, the gods put, you know, the box in within Pandora's, you know, reach, and God puts this tree within Eve's reach, and tells them, just tells them, just do me a favor, don't touch this. <laughs> How about this? How about don't give it to me in the fucking first place? Okay. Uh, how about that? How does that work for you, God, the Almighty? I mean, no, that wasn't paradise, okay? That was that was a test. It was a great big test that uh, that humanity failed. But according to the Bible, you read it, Eve failed because when God came a looking and wanted to know, hey, uh, what's going on? Why why didn't you come when I called you? Uh, Adam and Eve t- tell God, well, we didn't come to you because we were naked. And God asks, well, who told you you were naked? Uh, and then Adam, being the stand-up guy he is, says, that bitch you gave me uh, gave me fruit from the forbidden tree. <laughs> and I ate it. <laughs> You're like, well, did you know it was from the forbidden tree? Well, yeah, but she gave it to me, so. <laughs> and that's the story of Adam and Eve. <laughs> that's the story of Eve, okay? 
right, let's let's blame. All right, so so far we can blame Pandora and we can blame Eve. Now we can actually blame somebody before Eve. We can also blame Lilith. Uh, I know I've done uh, I've done uh, shows on this topic before, but it's always something that always comes back to me because I I, I always really really enjoy it because I love the fact that we we historically we like to blame women for the shit that is either both our faults or really just your fault. And I'll be getting more into that, but the story of Lilith, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is actually that Lilith was meant to be Adam's first wife. Now, Lilith, unlike Eve, was not made from a rib bone. Lilith was created in very similar fashion to Adam, dust to dust kind of action, okay? And uh, Lilith was presented to Adam to be his woman, to be his wife. But under the old uh, Judeo uh, ways of marriage, uh, a woman was to be subservient to her husband. And Lilith, being the independent woman that she was, said, uh, I don't want to do that. And he was like, well, well you got to do that. And Lilith said, well, I don't feel like doing that. And so she was cast out. She wasn't allowed in, in a paradise anymore. Instead, she was cast out. And she became known as the mother of all demons, meaning that uh, she was willing to fuck anything that came along. You know, any other man, uh, beasts of the field, dogs, whatever, uh, fallen angels. And she would fuck them and give birth to whatever disgusting thing that, ca that came out of her. And thus, another reason that we are surrounded by so many terrible things on our planet is because of Lilith, the mother of all demons, because she didn't want to be subservient to Adam. She wanted to be an equal. That's why you have uh, the term L Lilith Fair. Not that I think Lilith Fair exists anymore. I don't think they do that rock concert anymore. But, uh, but you get the idea. That's where you get Lilith. And it goes on and on. I mean, you go through the Bible and you will, and through Greek Greek mythology, you will see this kind of shit. Another really great example is one of my favorites: the story of Medusa. Medusa was a priestess, and she was a priestess of a female deity. I forget the deity's name, but she was devout, and she was a good priestess. And one day, she's in her god's temple. And she is forcibly raped by a, by another god, a male. Again, I forget which one. Could have been Zeus. Could have been Apollo. And uh, to punish Medusa, the female de deity uh, turns her into the Gorgon, this monster with the snakes and the horrible, hideous body and the talons. And you look in her, look in the eye, you turn to stone. But, but there you go again. We blamed the woman for being raped. <laughs> And we punish her for letting herself get raped. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was being forcibly penetrated by the king of the gods, I think there's very little my rape whistle is going to do in, uh, <laughs> in what's going on there. So, uh, but yeah, but like I said, the, the, the history, the mythology, the, the religion is not, is written by men to, to skewer, you know, how things go. Um, Another beautiful example of uh, women being just total bitches in the Bible, it comes in the story of Lot's wife, uh, who was told, you know, when they were, you know, fleeing from Sodom and Gomorrah, they, they were told, don't look back. Wife's, Lot's wife looks back, she turns into a pillar of salt. Another fun one would be the wife of Job, who suffered all these horrible, horrible things, and Job remained faithful to God, but Job's wife kept saying, you know what, fuck this shit, just curse God and die already. I'm like, well, there's a good wife. I like her. You know, so <laughs> we are actually going to take a break right now because I got plenty more to talk about when it comes to blaming women throughout history. It's always one of my favorite topics. In any case, uh, today's music so far is being brought to you by a woman, Laura Rope. Uh, you heard her first song, Girl Like This. And here's her next song, Little Daughter. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. I'll tell you what I know Won't be around forever But I hope to see you grow In 
into a beautiful woman with a child of your own. Hear my words, little daughter, you'll never be Buy it, pay your debts, and don't be late. If you do something wrong, admit it and learn from your mistakes. Learn to play piano so your voice can soar and shine. Let the world hear your songs, and when I'm gone, please sing mine. Run into your feet. A precious minute. Learn right now to seize the day. Oh, and welcome back once again. Show the shirts the off the cuff. All right, that was more from Laura Rope. Not quite as bouncy as the last song, but uh, there it is. We're talking about when in doubt, blame a woman. Uh, before we get back to that, celebrity birthdays for July 9th. That would be Tuesday. Your birthday was July 9th. You share a birthday with Tom Hanks, who turned 57. O.J. Simpson turned 66. Courtney Love is 49. Jack White of the White Stripes is 38. Fred Savage from the Wonder Years is 37. Jimmy Smith is 58 years old. John Tesh is 61. Chris Cooper is 62 years old. Richard Roundtree is 71. You may remember him from Shaft. Uh, Scott Grimes, the actor, is 42. And Brian Dennehy, amazingly enough, is 75 years old. Uh, tell me he doesn't look like 20 years beyond that. All right. Been talking about women. Lots of women. Gotta love the women. Love blaming women for lots and lots of shit. That's what we do. We're not talking about, you know, Leona Helmsley here. We're not talking about, uh, what's her face, uh, Marie Antoinette here. We're talking about, you know, women that were blamed for shit that really wasn't their fault. You know, and that happens a lot. And based on that, I have a story here for you guys. Now, uh, over in Glendale, right here in California, there's a lot of different types of cultures living over there. There's, there's roughly something around, uh, I think, 50,000 people living in Glendale alone. And uh, about 5% of that population happens to be Korean. Now, the Glendale officials proposed a memorial... To comfort women. Now, for those of you who don't know what a comfort woman is, that's a prostitute. That's a hooker. But there's there's one more little itty bitty wrinkle to the, that those terminologies, and that is that they were abducted and forced to be hookers. They weren't paid for what was going on to them. Okay. Somebody was paid for what was happening to them, but not them, all right? Um, uh, they, it refers to sex slaves who served the Japanese army in ar- occupied countries during World War II, uh, where they saw it as... Now, the, the, the memorial is seen as a quiet gesture of goodwill for the city's Korean community, a, a commemoration of these type of things. Uh, it's estimated that anywhere between 80,000 to 200,000 women, mostly from Korea, spent the war in Japanese military brothels, serving up to 50 men a day. Think of that, 50 men a day, all right? I, I can't jerk off 50 times a day. Lord knows I've tried. But having to have sex 50 times a day when you don't really want to, uh, 50, you know, 50 different guys a day. You know, that's pretty rough. Now, amazingly enough, this memorial is being protested by the Japanese. What a shock. Uh, apparently, the, uh, the, the people that are putting up the memorial have been bombarded with uh, hundreds of angry emails, mostly, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, Japan, accusing them of fate of falling for anti-Japan propaganda and calling the Korean women. Uh, Many of them say they were abducted from their homes as teenagers. They're calling them, quote, liars and willing prostitutes. Um, (laughs) 
Uh, that is what they're saying. They're saying that uh, that uh, the vast majority of these <clears throat> comfort women were actually willing participants. That that they decided, you know, they wanted to make money. They wanted to uh, see the world. You know, be and be with Japanese dudes. You know, fifty of them a day. Uh, got a quote here. Quote, a 14-year-old girl doesn't voluntarily leave her village in Korea to go serve in, in the Japanese army. Give me a break, said uh, Councilman Frank Quintero. Uh, and for the most part, I got to tell you, I'm 100% sure that's true. You know, a vast majority of 14-year-old girls do not leave home, especially not 80 to 200,000 of them, because they want to be military hookers. Now, now but according to, to, hold on now. Takehiko Wajima, spokesman for the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles, has said that the government's official position is that the comfort women's story, quote, should not be politicized or turned into a diplomatic issue, unquote. How, what other uh, way of looking at it is there exactly, Mr. W Wajima? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm failing to see uh, what other way is there to see this. Uh, uh, I, now, Another Japanese human being, a female now, Yumiko Yamamoto, the Tokyo woman uh, leading the email campaign, told the Times that she has waged similar battles against memorials elsewhere. She said she's one of many Japanese mothers trying to fight the spread of fabricated Japanese history. <laughs> now, this is not all that different, uh, in my opinion, of what was happening during World War II uh, over with the Germans. Many women in uh, conquered areas were forced to become prostitutes or really let's not call them prostitutes. Let's call them sex slaves. That's what they were. They were sex slaves. And lots of these women were, in fact, Jews. Now, I find it very interesting that the master race who felt that the Jewish race was below them, was were like dirt, were like dogs, dog shit, and needed to be exterminated, still felt it was okay to fuck them. It was still okay to have sex with them, uh, but uh, you know they were not worth their time. And that is basically what was going on here with these, what we call comfort women, sex slaves. Let's try to keep it here. Mm. Now, um, generally speaking, they don't deny that the brothels existed. Instead, they argue that soldiers from all nations, including the U.S., patronized prostitutes during wartime. Okay, I don't disagree with that. I am 100% sure that American soldiers were getting hookers. I don't doubt that for a second. I don't doubt that the Germans did, that the Italians did, that the Canadians did. Anybody involved in World War II, if you were a soldier, you had a dick, there was a really good chance you were going to brothels, you were going to see hookers. And But the, the, there is a difference, my friends, between a paid prostitute and a sex slave. A world of difference here, okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure the Korean uh, comfort women, as they were called, a lot of them were not getting their fair cut. Um, and, I see, uh, and that any coercion used to staff the Japanese comfort stations, they say, was committed by unscrupulous Korean pimps, not Japanese officials. And I'm sure that the Japanese officials, you know, did a lot of extensive background checks into these pimps to make sure that their, their girls were willing. Uh-huh. Or, or here's another one, that the girls were also sold by their parents to private sex brokers, which is a tragedy, unquote, wrote one Japanese man who said he li lives in the U.S. and only identified himself by his pen name, Paku Reverman. Quote, they, or they volunteered to feed their family during the war, he wrote. Okay, again, not beyond the realm of possibility, but I think beyond the realm of 200,000 of them. That's what I'm saying here. Um, the, the, now, according to this, the Japanese government issued a formal apology to comfort women in 1993. It acknowledged that the Japanese military had established a vast network of brothels and its, and its officers at times had a direct role in recruiting women against their will. As a result, the apology said a great number of comfort women suffered immeasurable pain and incurable physical and psychological wounds. And this is beginning to sound like a contradiction 
in terms here. I mean, what, what, what does the Japanese government want us to believe here? That these were all willing participants or that Japanese soldiers were kidnapping women and forcing them to become sex slaves? I mean, which one is it exactly? Um, in May, Osaka Mayor Toru Hashimoto said the brothels had been a necessary part of Japan's war effort and questioned the level of coercion involved. A necessary part of the Japanese military effort. I love that. It's like, oh, we got a lot of soldiers here. We got to make sure they, you know, they want to be soldiers and they're happy. We're not paying them a lot and shit. After a while, even they get tired of rice. Let's get them some pussy. Not a bad way of thinking. I'll be the first one to admit. If you want to keep your soldiers happy, especially the straight ones, uh, pussy's a good way to go. But that still does not, you know, absolve you of the fact that you got slaves. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, we have a couple of uh, accounts here from a couple of these comfort women. Um... According to them, the new combative, combative tone coming from Japan has done nothing to silence 86-year-old Kang Il Chuk and others who live in a home for former comfort women outside of Seoul. She, quote, she says, I won't just disappear. Until the day I die, I will raise my voice to fight the Japanese government. Kang said that when she was 15 years old, Japanese soldiers came to her rural home while her parents were out and ordered her to come with them. She wound up on a train to China where she, spent, where she said she spent nearly four years in a military brothel. Quote, according to Kang, uh, I can't even remember how many hours I worked the day and how many men I had to serve. It was just endless. Others said that they had sex with 40 to 50 men per day. One day, Kang said, she took too long in the bathroom because she was bleeding from her rectum. A Japanese soldier came in and beat her in the back of the head, she said, ordering her to return to work. Well, yeah, because nothing turns a man on like a bleeding rectum. Again, you know, this, it's, look, I'd, I am not excusing any behavior by the Japanese government, by the Japanese military at that time, or by the Nazis, or by Americans, okay? And look, I'd be the first one to admit, you want happy soldiers, you get them some pussy. But let's not act like, uh, this is a willing participant kind of scenario here. Uh, another survivor, Yi Okiyasun, 87, said two men grabbed her while she was walking to a shop at the age of 15. When she kicked and screamed, she said one of them shouted, Shut up, you brat, and she realized that he was actually Korean. She too was shipped to China, where she initially worked as a laborer I, at a Japanese airfield. Quote, I complained and cried. I screamed to be sent home. Instead, a Japanese soldier took her to a brothel. Quote, when I was forced to work as a sex slave, I wished I was dead. But she said, but she knew better than to resist after seeing a, another 14-year-old girl killed with a sword right in front of her. Uh, at the end, the end of the war, Yi said Japanese soldiers took her and some others into the mountains and left them there for dead. Good news is, of course, both ladies did survive their ordeal. Neither of them ever went back home to their families, uh, fearing uh being shamed you know so being uh, fe they feared the shame of surviving being prostitutes serving 50 men a day you know to hell with the beatings the bleeding rectums they knew that if they went home they would be the ones seen as ones that did something wrong because they let themselves be raped rather than die with honor and that feeds into a whole load of bullshit that I just refuse to accept. Now, on that fun note, we're going to take yet another break <laughs> with more La Rope and her song, Mama Needs a Girl's Night Out. <laughs> I'm Joe the Shirt, and I'll be right back. Dinner 
when she closes her eyes. The older one's crying, cause she dropped her French fries. Get out the high heels and perfume, buckle up, girlfriend, gonna howl like a bird. Mom's gone wild. Little mama needs a girl's night out. Mom's gone wild. Lord knows she loves her child. And Joe the Shirts, off the cuff. Welcome back once again. That was Mama Needs a Girl's Night Out by Laura Rope. You may be thinking maybe some of my musical choices are a little off with today's topic. But uh, I did want to highlight female singers today. And uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to put on any like thing depressing and downers or anything like that. I... Wanted to keep some aspect of the show up more on the upside. Now, before you get getting into the idea that uh, you know women are innocent, Lord knows they're not. Like I said, Leona Helmsley, uh, Marie Antoinette, and I mean, there have been a host of evil bitches throughout history. They've existed, all right? Um, and we have one in the news from very recently. Okay, let's see. Let's see, what, what is this woman's name? Uh, let's see. Princess Mishail Al Alban, a Saudi woman, actually. Um, hold on, what do we got that? Oh, yeah, Imelda Marcos, another good one right there. Now, the princess here uh, is being accused of uh, human trafficking. And uh, what's really great is that she lives. Not too far from here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Irvine. <laughs> okay, a woman whom Orange County authorities describe as a Saudi royal princess was charged Wednesday with human trafficking for allegedly forcing a Kenyan woman to work as a domestic servant. Uh, Mashael Ayaban, 42, was taken into custody early Wednesday by police at her Irvine home in a gated community in Orange County. Uh, alleges that Ayaban forced the woman to work 16 hours a day, seven days a week, for only $220 a month. A more, authorities say that she was unable to flee because Ayaban kept the woman's passport and documents. Now, what uh, to add to this? The fact that she the woman is dealing in human trafficking, and and it's not and and it's not just this one individual. And let's not forget that it's, it's also another woman. But she had four other illegal female servants working for her and her family. That's right. Uh, police, <laughs> see, uh, and see, in addition to the Kenyan woman, uh, police officers found four other workers being held under similar circumstances. Uh, judge ordered she be held a, a, in lieu of $5 million uh, bail. He also ordered her to surrender her passport not to travel outside Orange County and to wear a monitor if released. As one of the wives of Saudi prince Abdul Rahman bin Nasser bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, there's a mouthful, and they say Puerto Ricans have a lot of fucking names. Uh, <laughs> I find it amazing that $220 a month is the most that the prince could come up with to take care of one of his wife's servants, much less five of them. <laughs> Uh, her, her attorney, Paul S. Meyer, said that there was no physical abuse, no physical restraint, and that the complaints were about hours worked and wages paid. Well, yeah, if I work 16 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, and make $220 a month, I'd be a little pissed. That's slave wages. That's, that's why the minimum in California is $8 an hour. I think if you work 16 hours in a row, you would have made $220 once you get into overtime and then double overtime, you're making some money. <laughs> um, according to this, the woman was, con was uh, contacted through an agency in Kenya to work for uh, Al Alban's family in Saudi Arabia in March 2012. She was meant to work for two years and paid $1,600 a month. She was told she'd work eight hours a day, five days a week, and that her pay would rise after three months. Um, authorities say that when, when the woman arrived in Saudi Arabia, Ayaban took her passport. And, uh, and, and then her and her family came to live in Irvine in May. Police said the servant came with four other women from the Philippines working under similar co contracts. 
uh, the servant told authorities that she was working for various Aliban families, members living in four luxury apartments in a development at Jamboree Road, police said. She claimed she was not allowed to leave the complex without a member of the family present. Police arrived at the home, found the four other women, and are currently looking to get into a... Uh, Oh, God, a safety deposit box where uh, her alleged papers and passports are being kept. Okay. <clears throat> so, like I said, I, at no point will I ever say that women are innocent victims all the time. This here we have clearly a case where that is not the case. It's a very similar case that happened uh, just last year, also not far from here, where a woman had, what was it, like the... Uh, Ten or twenty thousand dollar mansion where she was keeping female servants under similar circumstances, paying them next to nothing, forcing them to cook, clean, and be a nanny to her children. Uh, and there was no, no such thing as a sixteen hour workday. She was on call all day, all the time. It just, but she was worth millions, billions even. And with that said, let's go move on to celebrity birthdays. <laughs> If your birthday was July 10th, that being yesterday, you share a birthday with Sofia Vergara, who's 41 years old. Jessica Simpson is 33. The real Jake LaMotta, Raging Bull, is 92 and still going strong. Um, Fred Gwynn, you know him as Herman Munster, shares a birthday today with the one and only Arthur Ashe. Uh, Ron Glass is 68. You may remember him from the TV show Barney Miller. Uh, let's see... Um, Thomas Ian Nicholas is 33. He's uh, the kid that decided to make the, the, the pact in, a, in the movie American Pie. And uh, that is it for that, actually. But I'm going to do today's celebrity birthdays because I don't want to forget them because we're almost out of time here. If your birthday is today, July 11th, you share a birthday with Lil Kim is 39 years old. You all share a birthday with Yul Brenner and John Quincy Adams, sixth president of the United States. Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi is 54 years old. Giorgio Armani is 79. Leon Spinks is 60. I know that name, Leon Spinks, means something to a few of you out there, especially you sports fans. That's right. He beat Ali. Don't tell me he ate a bad motherfucker. Tab Hunter is 82. Let's see if you remember that name. Uh, Jeff Corwin, the, uh, <laughs> the, the animal guy, is 46. And uh, Bruce McGill actor Bruce McGill is 63. You'll remember him from such movies as Animal House and The Legend of Bagger Vance. Anyway, we are almost done. I've been enjoying my time here getting all this out of me uh, and uh, reminding you guys about how women are perceived in the world we live in. Uh, we still live in a world, honestly, where uh, if a woman is uh, raped... Uh, we can blame her for it, especially if you live in any of the Saudi countries, Islamic countries, a lot of Asian countries, and really up until quite recently, this country. You know, oh, you wore something provocative. Oh, your skirt was too short. Oh, you were too flirty. You know, uh, what's it? You got something to say there, babe? You asked for it. You, uh, that's right. That's right. The women were asking for it. Of course they were. They were on their way to uh, on their way to Bible camp. Of course they were looking to get raped by four or five thugs. And that's what that's what women do all the time. Uh, and like I said, it's uh, it, it 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 doesn't occur to anybody that you put Pandora's box in front of me. It's just a matter of time before I, I open that motherfucker up. It's going to be Joe's box after that. I'm opening it. You, you, put, you, put, you, give, you put me in paradise and tell me, don't eat from that tree over there. That's it. That's all. You can, you can do whatever you want. Don't eat from that tree. I think I'll go a day, maybe. <laughs> you know, because God didn't tell me what the consequences were. You read the Bible, the consequences are not there. God just said... Don't eat from that tree. He didn't say, well, if you eat from that tree, I'm going to kick you out of paradise and you're going to be mortal and the rest of your life and that of all of your descendants is going to be nothing but pain and suffering. Well, if you had said that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't have. But then again, we also live in a society where uh, the average criminal knows that if he commits a crime and gets caught, he goes to prison. He, he, he has to go. He gets punished for it. So maybe even knowing what the consequences were, you know, maybe knowing that the consequences were so dire, so 
wrong, so painful. Maybe that would still make you want to know what could be so bad about eating that fruit that I would be punished this hard. It's just a piece of fruit. And there's lots of it all over the place. I, even if they told me, there's a good chance I'd still take a bite anyway. You know? And, and once again, it's the God or the gods putting this temptation right in front of you. And you notice it's ne- it was never, in neither case, was ever the men that, uh, that, that gave in. What did they do? They gave in to the woman giving him the fruit after she'd already fucked up. And, and like I said before, when God asked him, why did you eat from that fruit? Why did you eat from that tree? And what did he say? The woman you gave me gave it to me. And like, did you know what it was? What it was? He's like, well, yeah, but she gave it to me, though. <laughs> Love that concept. Uh, we, we like to live in a society where we, we like to blame women for the things that we do. You know, like Islamic societies, we like to blame them because we've raped them. We like to blame them for inciting lust in us. Well, I got news for you. The lust is there. There's a reason uh, young boys go around fucking pillows and jerking off 13 times a day. And, uh, you know, guys put peanut butter on their dicks and wave the dog over. You know, there is a reason for this. Because the hormones are raging. And, uh, and, and we're taught that that's okay for a man. But if you're a woman, you have a sexual desire of any sort and you display any type of sexuality at all, well, then you can't blame the guy for raping you, can you? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Hmm. I don't know. Now, tomorrow, I'll be covering something else entirely. I'll be diving into the George Zimmerman trial. Uh, closing arguments are done. The, the, the defense rests. The prosecution rests. It is done. It is over with. And that's what I'm going with t- tomorrow when I do a show or my next show. If it's not tomorrow, it'll still be my next show because I want to see if I can get a prediction out of me before uh, it's handed down. The decision is handed down about that. Uh, I, think, I think there are a lot of people that have been watching that trial on TV and reading it on, in the news. And a lot of you are rather surprised at to hear certain things come out of the mouths of certain people and a lot of contradictory uh, arguments coming at one another uh, and I will get into all that tomorrow but from now on I'm going to play one last song and get the hell out of here and this will, will not be by Law Rope this will be from Lali Puna alright and th- their song Move On thank you for listening I'm Joe the Shirt and I've been off the cuff The entire show to be nothing but estrogen today. Everybody, come on, rock, rock, come on. We're rallying the party, rally my ninja from San Diego, Cali. We run in the streets and alleys all the way down abroad in the Death Valley. You put it tally, my battles on metals. I travel the metal, the foot to the pedal, the wolf in the metals. My pack is harder than needles, magneto, clap and torpedoes. My show is lava than Tarantino beat. It's leaving you all in the feet of all the back. How many really want to meet up with my millimeter? My caliber is an animal, scavenger, your cannibal, sticking my jack, not being your cannibal. But your simple common flaw is your camouflage is nothing but a fraud. And your entourage is just one blonde broad. We want you to know that we ain't playing anymore. We came to rock this place, so you better. Figure the definitive a minute to the method of my manners of manners on smack the shammers like David Bannock going bananas wearing pajamas in the Bahamas with your baby's mama looking a lot like Ben Laden got you tracing the plots I've been plotting only get lot of head nodding not as softly but soft in my jogging for those that listen with caution I'm marching the pit with apples and hits lounging in the Oval Office cater my roster chicken and waffles how awful I'm quite possible the opposite the opposite get off of it some say articulate that tickles the bits with lips this bit to rip so you just best quit yeah I'm talking to you you.